Hello and welcome to Sophie Co Visionary. It's me, Sophie Shepard Notze. Performing arts are cautiously returning back on stage, having to deal with a myriad of challenges in the past COVID era. To talk about this, I'm joined by Maestro Gian Andrea Nozeda, music director at National Symphony Orchestra, principal guest conductor for the London Symphony Orchestra, and Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. Maestro Gian Andrea Nozeda, music director at National Symphony Orchestra, principal guest conductor at London Symphony Orchestra and Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. Great to have you with us today. Maestro, so much going on um, in the post pandemic world regarding performing arts, and I'm just really glad that I get to speak to you with what's going on in classical music and philharmonic orchestras. So let's start from the beginning. We have venues that are locked down, orchestras and theaters turned to online streaming and as temporary solution, it's fine, I guess, right? But obviously the shared experience of live performance, it can't be replicated. At the same time, we see how this pandemic has jump-started everything digital. I mean, if people uh, now have online education, online trade, they work online. Do you think people will continue to consume art online once the pandemic is over? First of all, hi everybody. Uh, I think uh, the possibilities that technology gives us today are important because uh, in a moment of emergency you can use it. Even in the normal, in the normal world, you can eventually use that. Uh, can you imagine without technology we, we will not be able to, to this this uh, conversation between us? But uh, one thing is just uh, emergency and uh, just to continue through streaming, through all the devices we have to play and to just uh, communicate uh, with the music uh, through technology. And one thing is the live performance, the energetic level and the emotion you can feel in a live performance uh, you are absolutely right, cannot be replicated at all. So I, I think uh, those things are two different kinds of way to approach music. One is uh, closer to recordings and uh, the other one is more connected with the normal day by day life. Okay, so now that we live in this reality where we're sort of faced with a choice and we have both of it in the nearest future, I'm thinking, for instance, on the other hand, I understand the authenticity of the performing life with audience, but on the other hand, look at the reach of a well-placed stream, and it's far beyond the capacity of any concert hall. So what is more important, do you think, spreading the gospel to as many as possible or authentic experience? I think uh, we have to take advantage of both, because uh, like, uh in the old days to have a recording like a CD or an LP, you can you could hold the radio, the broadcast uh, without reaching also people not uh, uh, coming directly to the concert. So I think uh, the most important thing is not to lose the curiosity of the live performance because something uh, unexpected can happen there. Of course, uh, with, uh, with these uh, instruments, uh, uh, we can reach a wider uh, wider audience but that can i think uh, uh, can push a little bit the curiosity of the people not coming to the to the concert or, or the theater just to to be the curiosity to go and just to attend a, a live performance so i think we should uh, uh, keep both things but for the immediate present uh, as we speak, the divide is still very much there. Do you think financially online streams can compensate for the losses in ticket sales for orchestras? Is it even possible? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Also because most of the streaming in terms of uh, giving us the possibility to do something were all, all, almost for free, everything, almost. Uh, and that uh, cannot be sustainable for uh, for any musical institution. You cannot uh, survive. Even uh, with the restrictions we have now, uh, two days ago I conducted my first concert after the lockdown in Italy. And uh, of course, on stage we had to, uh, 
to respect the distance, the social distancing, but the audience was open air concert and the audience was allowed to attend uh, not over the number of 500 people. But even so, I think it was important for them to, to, to come. Open air is slightly different, but if you consider a big venue, a big theater, a big opera house, big, big concert hall with uh, 2,500, 1,800 uh, capacity to perform only for 250 people, 300 people, of course, uh, you cannot increase the, 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 the price of the tickets <laughs> in the level to, 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 uh, to fill the gap. So I think for the moment, uh, we have a little bit to suffer, to suffer financially, but uh, I hope in the future we will go back uh, with a little bit more attention, with a little bit more responsibility, especially respecting ourselves and the others. Uh, but uh, I, I, really, I really hope and I'm sure we go back to, to, to the live performances, gathering a lot of people, also because Music is not only individual matter. Music brings people, people together, gathers people together. Doesn't matter if you are on stage or just uh, in the audience. Everybody uh, contributes to the, to, the, to the live performance, even the audience with the energetic uh, uh, help. No, I agree. Music makes the world go round. And actually, I want to... Uh, talk a little bit about the performance themselves because everyone lately just talks about the audiences and can they gather and will they gather and online or offline. But, you know, for someone who has spent most of her life playing piano, like I understand maybe as a performer that people who, who, who live in this orchestra, right, they're in a very sad situation. I mean, yes, for instance, um, the, the venues are reopening with new regulations where you can only f fill 50% of the seats, right? It's basically like empty room. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like playing uh, to an empty room. And I know that some orchestras come up with really cool ways to make up for empty seats. Like, for instance, in, in Barcelona Opera House, they've put plants. So they, 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 they made it seem like the orchestra was playing to plants. Do you think you'd be able to enjoy playing to plants? I personally, I enjoy playing even only for myself, <laughs> when, especially when I was a piano player. As a conductor, I don't have this uh, opportunity because I, I need desperately the cooperation of the musicians. But uh, I think this is just a sort of limbo situation. So we have to go through this time. And uh, for me, it's better to perform for 100 people than to perform for no one. Of course, it's a little bit more depressing when you go on stage and you see only 200 people. But if you know this is the limit because of the restrictions, you accept that for a while, of course. It's not the ideal situation. And uh, I saw that uh, I was also smiling myself to see that the plants, um, the flowers in, in Spain. And I think uh, it's, it's nice. It's better just to, 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 to see nothing, no one. Okay, you have the plants, probably they will have a sort of digital life and they will probably enjoy some vibrations from the music. But I repeat, music is, uh, is the language of the emotions. And uh, in terms to talk to the heart and the intellect of the people, you need this exchange. So I, I strongly believe when uh, this pandemic uh, will be more controlled or absolutely we can put it uh, behind our shoulders, we will go back uh, to a new normality, not the old normality, a new way. So it will be a restart will not be to reproduce what we had before. And then I'm also thinking about the orchestra and how it's all about unity and playing a uh, piece in one breath. And now you have these all new guidelines where you need to space musicians apart, right? Um, uh, condoning of brass sections uh, with the white screens, you know, like, I don't, like how, what is it like? You don't see your first violin, it's too far away. You don't have eye contact. Trumpets play behind a screen. I mean, th that must affect the, the performance, the, the, the whole thing. It must be very difficult, in my opinion. 
Of course, it's uh, more difficult, uh, but from the other, the other face of the coin is uh, uh, this situation pushes every musician to be even more uh, intensively active in listening to each other because of the distance. We don't play with, uh, with uh, the screens in Italy. So we just make the distance, but we don't put the, the woodwinds or the brass behind the screens. So they are distanced, but the sound comes directly. Of course, usually you have trumpet six or seven meters from you. Two days ago, I had the trumpet 15 meters, so the double distance. So you can adjust that. Of course, in terms of quality of sound, you pay a little bit something like that. But, but how to keep the motivation alive during this surreal time, which is a limbo, as we call it together. I think we have to be creative. I, I spent a lot of time learning the scores course, reading books, playing a little bit the piano. After 19 years, I, I didn't play the piano professionally. I will not get professionally back to play the piano because we've taken a lot of time. But, but uh, to do all the kind of things that keeps uh, your imagination, your creativity, your life with music very, very alive, very uh, energetic in a way. Okay, because for instance, I'm sorry to be so like detailed and adamant about this, but for instance, uh, everything that's brass, woodwind, singers, they're considered high risk in the time of COVID-19 in terms of spreading the virus via breath droplets, right? So when you're saying we have to reinvent ourselves, what, like, how are you going to reinvent the choir in Verdi's uh, Requiem, or, you know, keep <laughs> them, uh, what, uh, two meters apart each? Or, or we stop uh, performing this kind of pieces for a period of time? For a while, we have to stop to play uh, music with a lot of people involved. That is what is my perception. So, not a big Mahler symphony. If you want to perform a Mahler symphony, probably you will go to the number four. But you have a soloist, there is a singer. So, the singer, of course, uh, when they produce sound, of course, they split, not because they want, but because it's natural. Is uh, Even when you talk, you are doing that. So, in my perception, what I can see in the future, but is my personal point of view, opera houses will, uh, will be the, the, the latest in, in opening. Because, of course, the chorus, the, the interaction on stage, and the orchestra in the pit. In the pit, you cannot just... Uh, respect all the distancing so i think uh, for a while why i said we have to be creative because uh, maybe instead of the verdi requiem uh, if you want to stay on the subject of the requiem we will do the, the foray one or the mozart one for instance uh, i i i have to do all programs uh, i'm imagining the programs uh, I, I will be able to conduct in the future with a maximum of 40 45 people orchestra so that means, but that gives a lot of possibilities because you can do from Vivaldi to 20th century music. For a while, we have to, to, to not to suffer, but to, to perform uh, music with a reduced number of artists, unfortunately. Janandra, we're going to take a short break right now. When we're back, we'll continue talking about what's happening to Philharmonic orchestras after a COVID-19 pandemic. Stay with us. And we're back with Jen Andrea Nozella, music director at National Symphony Orchestra, principal guest conductor for the London Symphony Orchestra and Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. Jen Andrea, musical directors, maestros, they are employed in gazillion different orchestras. I mean, when I was saying your titles, they're like three in a row, the most obvious ones. And then there are other things as well. You're in America, you're in England, you're a music director in my native Georgia Snandali Festival in Georgia. You guys travel so much, you know, like your life is about being there, here, there, here. How are you going to keep that up when flights are such an iffy thing right now? That will change. That will change. 
will change not the fact that we reach different countries, but will change the number of flights. So if I go to America, I will not go to America just for two weeks uh, and after that to travel back to Europe. Maybe with us, maybe I will go to America, I will stay a complete month. And when I go to England uh, for London Symphony, instead of doing one or two programs, I will do two or three programs. And all the colleagues like me, we will just be more uh, when you get to a place to stay longer. So to do some guest conducting will be a little bit more complicated. So the music directors will spend more time with their orchestras. We go back to that kind of uh, uh, idea of the 50s and 60s, where the music directors stayed <laughs> practically all season with the, the, the orchestra. If you think Orman, Kusevitsky, Fritz Reiner, talking about American orchestra, uh, due to the fact I'm a uh, music director of the National Symphony Orchestra. And also to come to, for instance, the first uh, edition last year of the Sinandali Festival, I could just come for one week. Next season, not this one because of the pandemic, I will stay longer. I will come even before, I stay a little bit longer. So what we, I try to avoid is just to do bits, 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 bits. So I will do probably the same work, but instead of three bits in America, I will do one longer. And when I move to another place, I will stay longer. And probably that will help also our health mentality, the, the mind, the heart, just to, to take uh, less plane. That will not reduce our activity in terms of numbers of concerts, but in terms of movements and, uh, and travel. That will change. I'm, at least that is what I imagine in my life. Master, there's this really interesting poll um, published by Singapore Sunday Times, um, sort of making rounds all over the web right now. And people were just asked to rate top essential and non-essential jobs. And artists topped non-essential lists. This is the way people feel in many places affected by a pandemic. Um, you're saying we couldn't have survived without the music, this pandemic. I agree. What does it make you feel? Why is it that in the times of risk, musicians and artists are viewed as useless in society? Because uh, I think that is a, is a very interesting topic and subject you are just raising, Sophie. I think that uh, uh, when there is a something dangerous or perceived incredibly dangerous and you see that this situation affects uh, your economic system in terms of country, macro organization, geopolitics, uh, immediately you think you don't need uh, books, you don't need culture, you don't need uh, music, uh, you don't need even love, uh, just in terms of, you have just to, to get uh, the food, uh, you have to survive from one day to the other. That is the mentality when you are in a war, when you are in a situation of danger, Actually, I think uh, this is a big misjudgment because in terms, in, in moments of crisis, there is where the spirit needs to be fed. To, you have to give food. You should give food to that. That's why during this time, I discovered myself in reading uh, more than ever. I read five important books and starting the sixth one. I studied The Ring by Wagner because I have to do it. Can you imagine I had my first uh, uh, Rheingold in the spring of 2022. I, I played the piano. I, I, I started to, to, to learn German and I, I started to cook and to help my wife cooking. I think uh, in, 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 uh, in difficult moments, uh, uh, we should think that uh, our uh, spiritual part, our soul, needs also to be to, to to receive food, and not only the just to get from the morning to the night, and tomorrow is another day. Uh, but it's difficult to to convey these ideas when everybody is really battling and fighting just to stay uh, in, in in the in the more. Uh, tragic moments to stay alive and to so it's uh, I can I can understand for most parts of the population not uh, thinking that culture or artists uh, or literates uh, or musicians whoever are in the top priority but we are not useless at all even in these moments we have to 
re-underline our duties as a, as a human beings. As a human beings, but also, can we talk about classical performers in particular? Because you said that all great music is composed during uh, tradition, transitional periods of history, right? Correct, correct, correct. Just correct. Verzi, like you name it. Meaning that during these times, composers usually try to convey some really powerful message to the public through their music. Do you feel like we're living some sort of transition now? Should we expect, I don't know, amazing creations after we come out of this? I, I hope so. Also because even composers, they had more free time. They had also to use the time they found in their hands. No? And also composers, we have to, to remember, they, many of them, they, they teach. Many of them, they go to attend their performances just to stay home and just to feel the minutes, the hours, the days, the weeks. I, I'm sure also because uh, uh, artists in general, uh, not because we are particularly good, but we have the possibility to, to see much more far ahead than the others because we touch beauty, gold, art every day. And uh, so it's not because we are better than others, but because uh, just facing every single day uh, the great masters uh, is seeing how they behaved through difficult times. We can imagine what is going to happen. It's always been like that. So I, I think uh, it's very important to make our voice heard thanks to the great music. And we have to to wait when that will be possible in a big scale. But even in the small scale, even this, this interview with you, come on, it, it's fantastic. It just, just the fact we, we try to think or to imagine what is going to happen or how is the situation now, how to get out of for that and what kind of activity we can imagine for uh, afterward. That, that, is, uh, that is an important uh, moment. So that uh, tells me that uh, there is some interest. And talking about the level of interest and talking about the impact um, that we're analyzing right now, do you feel like um, a classical performer, for instance, classical artist can have um, as much of an impact as a pop artist would have on population? Because you don't particularly hear people going around streets, you know, humming Nabucco, right? Like people just don't listen to Verdi in masses anymore. Do you think when we talk about the impact that a classical music, classical music artist can ever have the same level of power and impact over people's souls in our days, in our age, as Verdi did in his? If uh, I try to remind uh, in, the, in the stadium, the, the, the football stadium in Italy, and they uh, sing the Marcia Triunfale from Aida. Probably they don't know it's from Aida, it's very, but they sing just to, to push their, their players to, to, to score the goals. If you ask, but what are you singing? Oh, I don't know, it's just that. Good, but it's very Aida. So, or uh, if I sing uh, even to the new generation, la, 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 la. They continue, la, 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 la. they don't have any idea it's Rigoletto, but somehow there is still this uh, DNA. Of course, you cannot, uh, you cannot imagine the, the power and, the, and the, the, the number of viewers of the pop star. We cannot compete with that. But classical music maybe will stay for longer. What is important to underline is the fact that the important words of our lives are always been the same, have always been the same. You born, you develop, you love, you hate, you make your job, you contribute to the building of society, you get mature, you get old, and you just pass, the, you hand on your experience to the next generation. And somehow, as late as possible, you will just go in the sky somewhere else. So all these kind of emotions, it doesn't matter if we are in the 21st century, in the 16th century, today with the pandemic, tomorrow, all the human beings will feel the same thing or to be 
unfaithful, to be faithful, to respect, to be joyful, to be sad, to be euphoric, to be depressed. And art, the real art, is, is, is a fantastic companion in, in our lives because everybody felt that. And the artists, they try to put on paper. And through the music, we don't have even, even the words unless we consider opera with the libretto or, or Latin text or, or whatever. But the, the language of the emotions, that's why music, classical music, but pop music, rock music, will uh, survive forever. Because uh, we will never stop to love each other or to try to get in contact with each other or, to, or sometimes to be furious and after that to calm down. But the most important thing is to try to build a new society, to build uh, to open and uh, so art is a, is a fantastic bridge and uh, until the moment the world will be able to build up something art will be a crucial part of it Maestro, on this optimistic note I would like to end our wonderful conversation it's been such a delight talking to you because I really couldn't wait to discuss all of these questions they were actually really bothering me because I am a classical music consumer so thanks a lot for giving us hope for the nearest future thank you for all the work that you and all of your colleagues have been doing through this really difficult times of pandemic thanks for keeping us sane and you stay safe you stay safe and thank you, it's been lovely to talk to you and uh, take care everybody, it's important. The future will be blossoming. Ciao. Thank you Maestro, bye.